Hey y'all, hey, 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 hey y'all, hey, welcome back, welcome back to the wheat field. It is your girl Lati coming back for a little evening session. Didn't want to go away for the rest of the night without leaving y'all a little bit of something, feeling a little rustle in my spirit, so I figured we might as well get out this here message, whatever spirit wants to say. So yes, my name is Lati, this is Tears and Wheat Tarot Show, thank you so much for coming by, and if you stick around and once this thing get to, you know, heating up and warming up and seeing what spirit wants to do, wants to say, that if you vibe with it, you subscribe. And if you care about the message and others who might need it, to share it out, share it out and help us grow. Yes, thank you so much. Again, I'm Lati and I am a channeled messenger and I sit with the infinite intelligence, the cosmic mind of our most high God. Yes, the creator of all things, the Lord and King of the universe itself. Yes, and I... I am uh, surrendered to uh, bringing the messages that the spirit wants to bring. Huh. Yeah, so if it wants to speak through text, we have the Book of Secrets by Deepak Chopra. If it wants to speak through any of the pendulums that we have, I mean, we have a few, you know, we have a few, you know, sometimes spirit wants to come and rest and sit and speak with us depending on uh what is being said and we also have tarot cards yes and spirit has pulled out quite a number of decks we have affirmed that these are the four that spirit wants to use and talk to us through so we will go ahead and do that but first we want to talk about the misuse of time Ooh, yes spirit says yes that is what we want to discuss today so let us jump on into it thank you so much spirit the whole infinite of the most high god the cosmic mind of our creator Thank you so much for being here with us and bringing your spirit and, and giving us the messages that you would like to say into your we feel. We thank you for your presence. We are gratefully aware and consciously aware that you are with us. And we come seeking, seeking to you for answers and revelation. Thank you so much for your goodness, for your kindness, for your presence. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I say, yes, Ooh. Mm -hmm. that connection. Ooh. And when I say I could feel that energy coming, because it's not the crystal that's the pendulum, it's me. You know, so people, you know, don't necessarily understand that all the time, do they, Father? No, they don't. They don't. Can you show the people truth? Yes, yes, yes. Can you show the people now? Oh, yes. Thank you so much. Can you show the people no? Thank you. And it is Ashe. All right. Thank you guys again so much for sitting with me. Uh, yeah. So, again, we're talking about the misuse of time. And uh, this is the Book of Secrets, again, with uh, Deepak Chopra. Deepak Chopra. <laughs> so, I don't know if you guys have had the opportunity to read this brother's text. And uh, so, many of you may be already familiar with this train of thought and many of us uh, already follow in the old way in the old law of these teachings yes yeah, so we just want to talk about it just chop it up a little bit mr chopper put it on out there so we're going to use his you know that remembrance the reminders that he was giving us to kind of chop up some of the stuff we got going on in our wheat field so let's get on into it now we talking about here uh time and it says, time unfolds the degrees of experience. Yes. And if you pick any quality that holds charm for you, you can follow that quality far enough with commitment and passion. You will merge with that quality in absoluteness. Yes. For at the end of that path, each quality disappears, swallowing up by beingness. You just follow that quality and stay committed and, and devoted to that quality until it comes into beingness. Yes. Yes. Time isn't an arrow or a clock or a river. It's actually a fluctuation between the flavors of beingness. Flavors of beingness? Hmm. Yeah, we have a flavor of love, a flavor of selfness, selflessness, a flavor of stillness, and a flavor of mystery. Ooh, come on now. Yeah, jnana yoga, the flavor of mystery. Yes, bhakti yoga, the flavor of love. Karma yoga, ooh, we know karma. Mm-hmm, karma yoga, the flavor of selflessness. Yes, the meditation and inner silence, Raj yoga, has the flavor of stillness. Who's on a path of stillness? 
or are you on that uh, karma yoga learning to become selflessness yeah selflessness yes and we say we experience life as evolving relationships grow from the first hint of attraction to deep intimacy love at first sight takes the same journey but in a matter of minutes instead of weeks and months mm -hmm. your relationship to the universe follows the same course if you let it time is meant to be the vehicle for evolution time is meant to be the vehicle for evolution hmm. what's the vehicle let's see oh i think we said the body was the vessel is that right it's the vehicle so time is the is meant to be the vehicle for evolution but if you misuse time it becomes a source of fear and anxiety mm. so if we are here in the vessel using time to evolve creation or have creation evolve and move forward there is a thing about misusing the time and we do start to get fear and anxiety when time is misused because we start to feel that immortality of the vessel that we sit in right and we know that there's only so much time that we have in order to effectuate or affect evolution of creation to be an impact to leave an imprint yes to do the service the work for which we come to do is that right father yes true that's true being anxious about the future so misuse of time what does it bring we said fear and anxiety right so being anxious about the future we also get caught up in living, reliving the past. Reliving the past. Misuse of time. Yeah, and that's a huge one because people get to ruminating, ruminating, round and around and around and around and around and then backwards, like always thinking about past thoughts. So the consciousness is never in the present, but it is always in the past, in the past mind. Yes regretting old mistakes Ooh, come on father that's a good one regretting old mistakes yeah we spent a lot of time in regret we had that in one of our cards was it yesterday I think it might have been yesterday when we did a, a daily message or evening message maybe it was afternoon session uh, yes what defines the contents of my life I believe it was that this morning Anywho, go back through them archives and check it out. We be pushing out a lot of messages, and I don't want to call it wrong, but it was just recently. It wasn't today, I believe. It was just today. Yes, we were sitting on the porch. We talked about this. Yes, regretting old mistakes and reliving yesterday. Yes, misuse of time, anticipating tomorrow. Ooh, so we not regretting old mistakes, reliving yesterday. We are anticipating tomorrow. Mm. Or racing against the clock. Oh, I got to hurry up and get because I only got so much. I got to race and hurry up, right? Yeah. Brooding over impermanence. Brooding over impermanence. It's not permanent. Everything is temporary. All this stuff is going to pass away. And you can't take none of it with you. Uh, no. You cannot. And resist and change. Ooh. Woo. Because see, the whole purpose of the vessel being here and your spiritual essence being here in this plane is to change, beloved. It's to change. It is to evolve. It is to move creation forward. And you being a piece of creation to move yourself forward, your spiritual essence forward, to come out and go forward and to go forth. And Yes, that is a part of the purpose. That is a part of the design. That is why you chose to come here. Oh, yes. We be seeing that all the time. I mean, it's kind of like one of those things, you know. Don't do such and such because they didn't choose to be here. Yeah, you did. Honestly, you did. You did. You chose to be here. You chose to come in where you came in. You chose the family that you came into. You chose all of that. Yeah, you did. Because you knew that you was going to be strong enough to make it through the place that you dropped in on. You did. I told you. Everybody, this is Survivor. On, on a cosmic scale. Yeah, this is Survivor on a cosmic scale. Come on, we. And let's think about this here thing. You know Bear Grylls, you know him. Everybody know Bear Grylls. He been eating all kind of bugs and stuff. I mean, like, you know, that was one thing that caught your attention. He is really out here in the middle of the forest eating grubs and bugs and stuff for protein cause so he don't, you know, he done pushed himself to the whole max. Yeah, that's what we 
come in and fuck. We drop on in into these various situations to push yourself forward. We do. And we don't remember that that's what happened because it's a whole soul contract up there in the heavens. Like you agreed to come down here and do a thing. You agreed to come into the space that you came into. You agreed to walk this thing out and to use every bit of your knowledge and skills and capabilities huh, to be able to get on through this thing to survive. You did, yeah. And, 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 and depending on what you agreed to, you maybe didn't even come here to be here that long. It could have been to come to learn uh, selflessness, karma, yoga, selflessness. The path of selflessness could look very different than what we, we think about it should look. It, it, it really does. And the ability to sit in that space can be uh, challenging at the least very, very, very challenging to say that other entities and energies and what it is that they came and agreed to do in this plane, that it is a part of a grand design for which we have no real knowledge of. Like, we only are pixels, and we can only, you know, we are only consciously aware of so much. Yeah. Presence isn't an experience. Presence is felt whenever awareness is open. Open enough. The situation at hand doesn't have to bear any responsibility. Sometimes it could just be. You don't have to blame it or judge it. You just let it be. Because for some reason, it just is. There's nothing you can do to change it. There's nothing you can do to, 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 to take it back or, or anything. And it's supposed to be. And it is supposed to be for a reason that's, you know, in the scope of that big picture. Paradoxically, someone can be in intense pain only to find that in the middle of the suffering, the mind, unable to tolerate the body's torment, suddenly decides to abandon it. This is particularly true of psychological pain. Soldiers caught in the terror of battle report a moment of liberation when intense stress is replaced by a rush of ecstatic release. Ecstatic release right in the middle of intense suffering? What? Ecstasy changes everything. The body is no longer heavy and slow. The mind stops experiencing its background music and of sadness. Background music of sadness and fear. Because, you know, the music, the thoughts are playing in your mind. Yeah, so ecstasy changes that. The body is no longer heavy and slow. The mind stops experiencing its background music of sadness and fear. There's a dropping away of personality replaced by the sweetness of nectar. This sweetness can linger a long time in the heart. Some people can say it tastes like honey in the mouth, but when it leaves, you know beyond doubt that you have lost the now. In the mind scrapbook, you can insert a picture of perfect bliss. And that becomes like the first taste of ice cream. Of unattainable, an unattainable goal you keep running after, only to find that ecstasy remains out of reach. The secret of ecstasy is that you throw it away once you found it. Why can we not live there in that space? If you find it, can we not stay there, Father? Yes, yes we can, let's see. Only by walking away can you experience the present moment again, the place where presence lives. Awareness is in the now, when it knows itself. Hmm. If we take away the vocabulary of sweetness and bliss and nectar, the quality that is missing in most people's lives, the biggest thing that keeps them from being present is sobriety. You have to be sober before you can be ecstatic. This isn't a paradox. What you're hunting for, call it presence. The now, or ecstasy, is totally out of reach. 
You cannot hunt it down, chase after it, command it, or persuade it to come to you. Your personal charms are useless here. And, uh, and so are your thoughts and insights. Sobriety brings, brings, huh? everything that we just said but that's not what this text says it says begins sobriety begins by realizing in all seriousness that you have to throw away almost every strategy that you've been using to get what you want if that's all at all intriguing if that is at all like throw away every strategy that i've been using to get what i want like i gotta throw it all away like why pray tell how do i like what you she talking all this crazy stuff. She talking about something in the middle of pain. It's ecstasy and stuff. Then like this is some S and M type of stuff. This is not that. No, no. Let's keep on going and just unravel this just a little bit more. Just to see what they're talking about. Come on in here. Just stay with me. Set for a spell. Let's work it out. All right. So sobriety sobriety begins by realizing in all seriousness that you have you have to throw away almost every strategy that you've been using to get what you want and if that's at all intriguing then carry out your sober intent to release those futile strategies as follows spiritual sobriety that's what spirit was bringing us to can you guys see that that's where spirit had me marked for the day for this evening when we went to we had a little lunch, y'all. We took ourselves to a little lunch date. It was good, too. We had, uh, what did we have? We had, uh, it was crab salad on an English muffin with uh, poached eggs and hollandaise. It was, oh, when I say it was good, it, you know, it could have been cooked a little bit, but we don't complain. It was good. It was really good. It was, yes. Uh, spiritual sobriety. Getting serious about being in the present. Come on now. Get serious about being in the present. Because right now, the now is all there is. So when we are seriously present in the now, hmm, yeah, I think that's sobriety. Yeah, I was about to say, where my glass at? Because we got a mimosa around here somewhere. We do. Uh, getting serious about being in the present. I'm going to presently go get my glass. Hold on for one now. Okay, there you go. Crystal on the floor. Where it go? There it go. Uh huh. See y'all hang out and all y'all that's returning. Hey, welcome back to the week, Phil. You know this me. You know I throw cards on the floor. I kick the table. I kick the camera. You know crystals flying everywhere. It, it happens like that. The energy be flowing, but that was just clumsy. That didn't have nothing to do with no energy right then. So, but yeah, thank you for hanging on with me because we had to get this glass because you know my throat be getting dry. I be having to get that sip. Y'all got a sip? Let's get a sip. I know. I know it was good. This week, y'all, this week is uh, raspberry lemonade mimosas. Yeah, that's what we own. Mm -hmm. It's tasty, too. My daughter made them. They're good. Um, spiritual sobriety, Spirit says. And this is page 206, again, of the Book of Secrets with Deepak Chakra. Right? And it is uh, talking about spiritual sobriety. So it says, getting serious about being in the present. Catch yourself when you're not paying attention. So like if your mind is just wandering off somewhere, catch yourself when you're not in that, in the, in the now. Like you're not present in the moment, right? Uh, if you down the road or way back when or you off in the future trying to figure that out, uh, you're thinking about, oh, I don't have enough time. This. I got to get off and do that thing. I got to get to the next thing. Pull yourself back into the moment into where you are right now and pay attention to what your mind is racing on. Pull yourself back into conscious focus of what it is that you're thinking on. What is it ruminating? Yeah. Yeah. Listen to what you're actually saying. Yeah. Is it true? Because sometimes we be having stuff running around in our mind and it's just playing on over and over again. That music, that background music that's playing is on repeat, right? And after, usually it's on repeat in one way. It's either, it's either Come on now, I don't know what energy is up in here because like uh, I'm feeling a little tongue-tied. Most high, can you make sure that all of this energy space is blocked and sealed out? Any energy that will come against this message will be denied access to this space at this time. Thank you so much. And if you call it to be so, 
then I would ask that you put an ashe on that according to your authority. Ashe, all right, y'all, let's get it. Yes, we have to do that because, see, these energies don't be wanting us to talk about these things. They don't. These energies want us to just stay in our current state, like ruminating in the past or thinking about the future or worrying about how much time we have left. And it takes away from the current now so that we can be fully effective. Yes. So let's go ahead and jump on right back into this thing. Thank you so much for your patience and your time. And again, if you feel like you're still vibing and you can flow with your girl, you like what we're doing so far, take a minute to go ahead and make that a little bit small and hit that red button and subscribe. And if you also feel so inclined to do, uh, hit the bell too, so you can be notified the next time we put up one of these episodes. If you want to wait till the end to see how it comes on together because you're really not sure you're on the edge of clicking off, don't. Hold on right there and just sit for a spell. It's going to come together. I tell you, it's like cooking with cold Crisco, like that old school stuff, like seriously. You got to get it in the pan and get it warmed up. We 20 minutes in, but it's starting me. I feel it. I feel the heat coming. Come on. It's, it, come on in. Again, listen to what you're actually saying. Are you telling yourself the truth, beloved? Because oftentimes we, when we ruminate about the past and stuff that's going on back in the past, we're not telling ourselves the truth. We're not even seeing the situation the way it really was, the way it actually happened. And if you could actually have done something about it, because that might have just been the design and the plan all along. And maybe you are taking on responsibility that don't belong to you. Maybe you are placing judgment and blame on something that just is. It's a paradox and you need to just let it lie. I can't say what you need to do. It's a recommendation. It's a suggestion. You have free choice and free will. You do. And you could do whichever way you want. But Spirit said to ease some of this suffering we got on, we might want to stop ruminating and thinking about the past in such a way that it saying to ourselves that we have the ability to do have done something different or, or in, in conflict with what you did do, that you can no longer go back and change. Again, reliving those old moments. What, what Spirit is saying? Regretting old mistakes and reliving yesterday, reliving the past or anticipating tomorrow. So listen to what you're actually saying to yourself, beloved. When you do that, you can see the truth of it and then match up what you're saying to what it really is, to bring yourself back into the moment, into your now. Yes, so you can be aware, paying attention. Yes, watch how you react. Is it triggering you to respond in some sort of kind of way? Yeah, because a lot of times we live in the past and ruminations and all those things, those thoughts, they put a certain kind of sentiment and energy on you and you react from that space. There's something behind you, you call a clue or something that puts you back into a mind state and there's something coming at you at the same time and this is triggering you based on how you responded to this and how you feel about that thing. Yeah, triggers. Yes, triggers all the time because we are still having our mind processing in a back state instead of on the now. And even still, we're, are we telling ourselves the truth, beloved? Is it, are you really telling yourself the truth about that event? Yeah. And sometimes it's even, like I said, the basic truth of being here. Yeah, we did choose to be here. Folks say that all the time. Your kids didn't choose to be here. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. And they chose you as a parent. So give yourself a little bit of grace as we give each other grace, grace on all sides. Yeah, they didn't choose the circumstances for, uh, you know, for conception. They did not. But they did choose to be here with you. They did. Because when you think about this whole grand design and the fact that you are a whole spiritual essence being and you decided that you wanted to come and be here in this plane and that you could come and drop in on Survivor Series uh, live in 3D on Earth, huh, you picked a location and you dropped down on in that thing. And because you dropped down in here into a whole scenario because you knew you had the fortitude to get to it, get through it. Yeah. Pretty much. So remove yourself from the details. Yeah, like all those details, you can remove yourself mentally. Because a lot of the battle is mental. It's mental. When we get a control from our, of our mental uh, mindset, yeah, the spirit says sobriety. And not just being engaged in this right here, but uh, stuff like, again, rumination. 
living in the past, being in the future, everywhere else but here, everywhere else but present in the now. To be sober, include, and locked in on your now. Yes, focus, consciously aware of now. Come on, spirit. When you do that, again, you can see the rise and fall of your energy. What's coming at you, questioning what is triggering you, what's in that ego, in that attitude, in that sentiment, question it. You can keep an eye on it, focus attention and question all the time, and immerse yourself in a spiritual milieu. Immerse yourself in that spiritual space all the time where you are thinking about your essence and who you are and bringing all of your energy into your spiritual space. Everything, because we're getting energy and information thrown at us all the time, but to bring it in and sit it in that spiritual space, yes, is a thing. <sighs> Not paying attention is the first step to neither. This is the first step to. We got to get it out right because we're like, no, you got to say this right, okay? Not paying attention. Let me show y'all so y'all can see. You see that star down there? That's where we at. Don't know. Hopefully that was in there. That was good, you know. Not paying attention. The first step is neither mystical nor extraordinary. When you observe what you're not paying attention to, huh, when you observe what you're not paying attention to, yeah, you don't indulge in your wandering. When you observe that which you're not paying attention to, you don't indulge in wandering. Because if I'm wandering here or I'm wandering in the back, there's something in my now, my presence, that I'm not paying attention to. And when I come back to the now and I see and I put my attention on that, what I wasn't focused on right here was in this moment, in this now, yes, I cannot indulge in wandering. Because all of this mental focus is here on the now. So I'm not wandering off in the future. Ruminating about how much past, how much time I have left. You know, I'm not thinking about uh, future what ifs or I'll be happy when this or that or etc. Yeah, yeah. Anticipating tomorrow or racing against the clock, the book says. We're not doing that. I'm not back in the past and the things that I cannot change. I'm focused, I'm here. And whatever is going on in here in the now is what I keep put my focus on. I'm observing it to see. Sitting back almost like a third party. You know, if you any of my uh, Marvel people, you know, like the watchers, training yourself to be your own watcher. To see yourself objectively as you flow through your day. Pulling back. And looking at your now from an observant standpoint so that you are not wandering in the past you're not off into the future but you're looking at your now and you're looking at it with a sober clear mind that is not judgmental it is not biased it is just understanding that this is paying attention to it right listening to what you're saying Having returned from distraction off into the future or back in the past, listen to the words you're saying, the ones that are in your mind. Relationships are driven forward with words. If you listen to yourself, you will know how you are relating to the universe right now. Are you relating in a past backward state? Telling yourself untruths, things that cannot be true. Things that you could have controlled, things you could have changed, things you could have made different, but it was not called for it to be so. If it was not called for it to be so, then it is futile to spend and misuse time re ruminating on that which you had no ability to change. And then we are, again, the now is gone to waste, and it puts you in that anxiousness, that 
fear that time is being spent is running out so now you're chasing time to catch up which again is futile you can't catch up to the now because you're already in it and you're still missing the now by trying to get to something that has not yet come so again chasing tomorrow but pulling back into a state where you are consciously aware of the now beloved and being able to observe yourself objectively woo, come on if you listen to yourself you will know how you are relating to the universe right now yes right now And since we on a soul journey right now, Spirit said, let's get the cards out. Because uh, Spirit said, which way we're going? we're going soul journey. That's right. We on a journey. Spirit said, we on a soul journey. And uh, we are misusing the now. Did you want this card? No, we are, we are misusing time. Time is used as our wave that we use as we in the vessel move through evolution, right? It's a whole wave that we're going through. Again, survivor, we jumped in, right? And we only got so long to get to the destination. And the journey is the issue. The journey is where we pick up the skills and we just drop. I told y'all we'd be dropping cards. Do you want these, Father? Any of them? All three. Okay, well, there we go. You want anything else in here? Anything else? Not now? Wait for a moment. Okay, then we're going to set that to the side. Then we'll pick it back up in just a minute. First one we got out is doubt. Is that in the right position? This one. Okay, doubt. Is this in the right position? Yes. Friendship. Yeah, because we ain't, we don't be, uh, Friends with other or friends with self. Friends with self. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I understand that a friend is in my life for a reason. Yes, a lot of us don't understand the reason we have life or that we chose life, that we came to choose life. We chose life. We chose to experience life. You know, spirit wants to experience itself. And being in this vessel, you have senses. That's a whole thing. To experience self is a thing. Yes, because I would have never known what I looked like had I not gone past something that has a reflection. I would not know what I look like or what I behave like without something to reflect behavior back to me. It's reflection. Everything is projection, reflection. Yes, I know me because of others. Yes. I get a chance to learn me through experiencing myself in others. Again, if creation is all whole and creation is one, then I'm experiencing me in others. And when you resonate and vibrate, you call in others, you attract others on your vibratory level. Huh. So when I say your girl didn't have a whole lot, no. Because I vibrate on a whole different level. I don't, it's not a whole lot of people in the same spaces that I vibrate on that same space. You have to be in a place to find or be, continue to journey, to move into a space where you find those who you resonate with. Yeah. Birds of a feather flock, right? If so, however you resonating, you will find that. But the truth of this friendship, I understand that a friend is in my life for a reason. This is friendship with self, coming together with self, unity with self. Because we do not, that's Sasha, uh, we, we, we don't remember that we did choose to come. We chose. We stood up in the spirit and we chose to come. To access a vessel into a unit construction space and knowing that you had everything the fortitude to get through however long you were designed to be here so when we can go back and say that source gives life and takes life everything is in the design everything we don't understand the why for or the length thereof and that's what it makes that is what makes us appreciate life 
because we don't know the design we don't know the length we don't know the why of how it's going to come how we're going to leave what is going to what we are going to experience we have no remembrance of that and those who are not us who are the out you know outside of this vessel you have no idea what's going to happen to me or what i signed up for in the spirit and i am i'm not of remembrance of it so i can't tell you and if i do learn that most of us who who can see our own end timeline they don't really want to dig into it. What they do is they learn, they know, they appreciate the now. It, that's all it does. Even when you get a diagnosis that can pretty much project to you the when, what it does, it gives you appreciation for the nows. You end up wanting more nows. So let's not continue to, 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 to debate, to, to misuse our nows because we need to have something telling us that it's finite. No, we already know that the journey is finite. We know that we only have so much now, so much now to experience. And we chose to experience just a little bit of now that we can. Just a little bit, even if it wasn't just before a brief second, we wanted to feel that. And so we came to do it and we just did. It's, that is really hard to reconcile, but ponder on it. Ponder on it, just for a little bit. To see the to get a glimpse of the magnificence of the universe. What would you give in the spirit? What would you say that you would come into just to see the sunrise? Just to feel the rain on your face. Just to see the magnificence of snowflakes and that each one are called is made different. Each crystal is different. Each one. To see its magnificence. The stars. We see their light, but they're no longer there. That's light that's been passed and gone. The sunlight that we see is, what is it, eight to eight, eight minutes behind or something like that. We're always look like to see the truth, the grandeur of the universe is why we came to experience these six senses that we have the ability to see to smell to taste to hear to touch and then the emotion the connectivity to just feel beloved is a blessing to just feel in this day and age People don't think about it, but depression is a blessing in the sense that you have the ability to feel the depths of the despair. And when you can feel that depth of despair, it is an opposite pole because it balances. The opposite pole is the height of love and bliss. The height of bliss. So if you are in a state of depression right now, know that as deep and dark as you feel is the same height in, of, of bliss that you can experience. It is. It is. And the grandeur and the, and, 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 and the lushness, the variety of the plane gives us ample reasons ample things and varieties to draw to hold on to to connect to to resonate mine was flowers not no cut them down and put them on your vase type of thing but just flowers flowers out in the plane yeah most had kept me here because i had a, a a service to do and I, I came to the conscious awareness and made the decision that if I could count a different flower every day that I would have a reason to be here for a whole bunch of days. And I found that that was simple. And then it was like, oh, okay, well then look how many flowers there are. And then look what kind of types of trees there are. And how many different types of grass. And then there was how many, how many different types of insects. Ooh, just start with beetles. Did you know that it's like by like 300 varieties of beetles? Just beetles. If you could count one beetle type of a day, that's almost a year. Like if you went on to discover, find one beetle a day, how long would you be here? That's purpose. 
But that's just to experience life, the simplicity of it. And sometimes going back to that mindset, again, very, very basic. Ooh. Because I, I mean, when I was that depressed, huh, I couldn't handle nothing complicated. It was literally, I need to be on, uh, look, A, B, C, one, two, three. That's it. Because everything else is so crazy in my life, I cannot handle another. Look, I don't, it look. Breathing, that was too much. Okay? I didn't want to think about it. And to be here, well, I got to get up out of bed. I need a reason. Oh, we're going to go find another flower today. Let's go find one. That was it. Literally. It. Get dressed to go find a flower. Worked for me. I'm still here. And it, and it went from counting flowers to seeing the grandeur in the, in, uh, of the entire universe. And discovering self. And the whole reason why I was still here. And what it is that I was supposed to. What did I sign up for? What did I say I was coming to do? Yeah. Went to a whole nother level of awakening. Imagination. I embraced and nourished the creative aspect of my mind. Can you be that creative and imagine? Wouldn't that take some of the pressure? The spirit says no upside down. We don't. Would, would it be? We have doubt. Yeah, that's why. That's the issue, doubt. I release the need to know all the answers. We on a seeking discovery to find all the answers. You want this? We done with that? Do you want, is there anything else? In the deck? Yes, but not that top card. I'm telling you, words is specific. You got to mind your words. Exactly what you say in the order of what you say it. Consciously aware, beloveds. Yes, is there anything else, Father? Okay, let's get it out. I know this is like a, it was, it's cooking, you know, it's, 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 it's doing its thing. Hope y'all can stick around with it. Yeah. Spirit says death. And death is a transition, right? It is not, it's like renewal, transition and renewal. I am learning that endings are merely beginnings, yes. Because when you come into this plane, you didn't start here, so this is not the beginning. And when you leave this plane, it is not the end. It is merely a transition. A beginning to another plane. Is that it, Father? Do you want the, the bottom card? Turn it over for the energy. Yeah, fear. Fear. I realize that I am testing my resolve to live in the energy of love. Spirit said, leave that up right there on the top. We can see it face up. I realize that I am testing my resolve to live in the energy of love. What is the energy of love, Father? Creation itself is the energy of love. Yes. I realize I am testing my resolve to live in the energy of love. We are here to test our resolve to live in the energy of love, to live in creation, to exist, to to exist in a manner for which we are aware, consciously aware of our existence and place our focus and intention on evolution and growth and, and, and ascension. Ascension. Yeah. And when you put it in yeah. evolution and growth and ascension and we have grief. That's challenge. This impartiality. The ability, the inability to be unbiased, to be balanced. To, to look at things as a just is standpoint. And that's very difficult because we have taken on the complete human being. The five, the six senses are so ingrained in us and so attached to our spiritual essence that we believe that the vessel is self. Expansion. Again, we're here to grow to expand, to move creation forward. But we are attached to the vessel, believing that the vessel is self, forgetting that the truth, that your essence, your spiritual you comes first. 
and you chose to be here in this manifestation so that you can experience and that's it just so that you can experience yeah and that is the miracle that is the miracle just to experience is the miracle to see the miracles of creation the forest the leaves change to see the variety of flowers how many you know var variations of life not only human right uh hu you know or but uh every creeping thing everything every herb every star uh the lights the the beautiful displays that we get um to know that we are all of that and all of that is us to see us to see ourselves to see self to grow self to expand it is miraculous when you come into that mindset it's freeing it's very freeing yes and to be out in that space of openness can feel very broad is this it yeah guilt guilt is here over past mistakes people are carrying guilt over past mistakes but again they are a part of the learning process fail fast fail often mistakes are for learning and if it is because you denied self you didn't listen to your spirit whatever the case would be is this it no this Impatience. Guilt, rumination over the past, impatience over the coming of the future. Rumination over the past, impatience over the future. Complete misuse of time for the now. Not being presently aware. Is that it for this day? No, there's more. Okay. Yes. Is this it? Is it this one? Okay. Discovery. Yeah. Self discovery, beloveds. That is, again, the purpose. Self discover. Yes. To discover. Turn it over. Are we at an impasse? this? Is it dissipating? Yeah. Yeah. Dissipating. This beloved here, this beloved is sitting on the couch watching things go by. Either she's watching something go by, life, not saying that the seasons have changed, not moving, not Listening to her spirit guide, it's just no movement. Is that right, Father? Yes. Yeah, stuck, moving. You can't move forward. You just won't get up. Won't get up. Won't get up and move. That's what I feel spirit is saying. Is that it? An impasse, moving to service, acceptance. What is it? Is this it? This one? This one? Isolation. So somebody's alone, sitting, feeling alone in a space, watching things go by, not engaging. Or maybe you need to sit in self-discovery and not move for a while and be in isolation. Is that it? No. Go out to discover. Creation. Go out and discover creation. Yeah. 
And you can go forward on your own and do that. Yes. No need to wait for anybody else to come along to do anything. Spirit is telling you to get up and go. And go by yourself. Is that it, Spirit? Yes. Impasse is here. Is that it? No. Passion. Is this it? No. This. This. Self-worth. Self-worth. Discovery of your self-worth. And, and, and that is a path that we all must journey on alone. Is that right, Father? Is there anything else in this deck? No, I shade to that. Thank you. Yes. Yes, the discovery of, of, of going and sitting in self in a space, or maybe you're not moving to self-discover, and that is the blockage. But to do that on your own will bring you to a place of discovering your self-worth. It will. It will. Yes. Okay, spirit. Do we going to get some wisdom? Yeah, we ain't going to rush this. This is a whole now. I see it. It's a discussion. And folks can come back here and if they, they want to dissect it and, you know, a couple of different bites, you sure can. So if you like how this is coming together, you know, it's long. I think we have 50 minutes. We ain't going to talk about it, you know. But if you want to, uh, you know, go through it a couple of times. Rewind it back if it works for you. You know, we spend that time doing other stuff all the time. It just depends about what you want to use your minutes for, y'all, your nows. These current nows, you know. Is it edifying to your soul? It's edifying to me. So I say edifying onto self to edify source. Hopefully it's edifying onto you so that you can edify source. And when we unite with this thing, then we both are edifying onto source. And you just got a better meal because uh, you the wheat, baby. When I say we the wheat and we call for good bread, uh, <laughs> yes, that's what it is. So, uh, yeah, thank her. Think on that just a little bit. We're talking about something that's a deep kind of concept. It's very shallow. It's surface level stuff. But at the end of the day, it's pretty deep. You know, it's one of those things that make you go, mm hmm. Yeah, it's one of those things that put you on a, a setback for a still spell just to think about it. Yeah. What if you actually did? Come in here on Survivor. Can, can, can you think about the fact, think about the plane of the earth and how treacherous it is. Like, it's dangerous. I mean, you got forests, you got volcanoes, you got rivers and lakes. Over 70% of it is covered in water. And, and, and the land itself, all of it is not habitable. So, I mean, you literally are in Survivor. You got to figure out what you can eat in here because everything ain't edible. You have to figure it out. How are you going to survive? How are you going to journey to the other side? And how much skill will you accomplish and pick up on this journey? Even if you're here for a second. Even if you're here for, for a second that you didn't even stay long. How much did you learn? How much did you pick up? Because you were with someone. You were in essence. You were in communion. For a good the time before you, you, you came out the womb, you were there. And you could hear. Yeah, you could experience all of that there's there's a space there maybe that's just the part that you wanted to to feel and that was it maybe you didn't maybe you didn't want to go through all the rest of it maybe can we put ourselves in that mindset is that is that wrong to think about that that uh yeah i was only here for two hours because i really only wanted to feel the nine months that i that i was in the inside i just wanted to be there that's what I wanted to feel. I didn't want the rest of it. And I didn't sign up to do all of that. I didn't. I came to just do that part. And I wanted to share that with you, particularly. I chose to come to you to share that with you. And that's it. Can we have that little bit of time that I was there? I appreciated you. Thank you for letting me share space and energy with you for that time just that because in the spirit I desired that and in the spirit that was my intention it's just to experience you experience creation experience self just to experience 
just to use my five cents, my six cents is six. I keep saying, I keep trying to get that right. Six cents, just to use them. That's it. Just to be in a vessel so I can do that. Go the distance. It's a challenge. Because not every spiritual wants to do that. They don't. Maybe the distance is not long. We were just saying that. Maybe it's. That was the distance and that was it. And then the ones that we commune with, that experience with us, that we connect to, they they don't know that that was just it. Because we, we don't know. We don't know the time. We don't know the now, the end of the journey. We, have, we don't have the remembrance. But that gives us appreciation. It's supposed to. That's a part of learning this. Is it this one? This one? This one? Was that it? This? Is there something that you would like to say? Source says that you choose the path before you manifest. You choose the path before you manifest. You choose the path that you will journey, that you take to ascend. You choose your path to ascension. Is it that card? Is it another one? Is it all of these? Unfinished Symphony. And that's a challenge. Why is that a challenge, Father? Because it cycles over and over and over and over. Why are there so many cycles? For the sake of ascension. So every cycle we go higher. That is the goal, is to ascend higher. Do you want this one now? No, is there here? Okay. Spirit says, chop wood. I hear karma yoga, yeah, in my head. Chop wood to clean some stuff up. Learning past, past issues. Learning from past issues to move forward, to fuel the going forward. Learning from past issues to fuel the going forward. Learning from past issues now to fuel the going forward. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. So we are, in, and, and we're again, we're moving from our south node up to our north node, and we're using the energy now to propel ourselves upward. Yeah. Was it this one? Exchanging gifts, to learn how to exchange, to give and receive. We talked about giving and receiving was in a challenge, and we talked about that early this morning in an earlier discussion today. So if you guys have time and you want to run back through the earlier discussion for today, we'll talk, we'll, you can see us discuss the giving and exchanging on that. Yes, and it is. That's right, Father. It's a never-ending story. 
It's never ending. Why is it never ending? Because the Most High sits so high. If we are journeying to discover creation and to ascend, even ascend back to unity, come back into unity with all of creation, unity with self, because we are all pieces of creation. And if the self, the source, the master self wants to come back into union, it's going to take a whole lot of cycles and a whole lot of learning for all of these pixels to journey, to come back into union. Unity. It is a never ending story because creation is always ongoing. I used to have a discussion all the time, and people would say, Is creation finite or infinite? And I say that it's infinite, and I have always felt that it was infinite because discovery is always ongoing. Every manifestation lends on to the ability to learn, and every learning lends to expansion. Tick tock. That's what we was talking about, time. And we use time to do it. We use time as a, a tool to learn, to journey, to evolve. And we are consciously aware that it ain't, that time is a fallacy. And that all it really is is a now. And the space that we have now, you know, flexible? No. Do you want this last card? No. All right. Chaos and conflict. The time that we have is is misused in chaos and conflict. Do you want this? And it slows us down and inhibits our ability to evolve and to grow and to push creation forward. Yes, this one. Poised. Staying poised. Poised and rooted, grounded. Knowing this in the now. Poised now. Being able to... You know, hold that composure. See what's, what's triggering you. Oh, yeah, you know something is happening. But you hold your poise. You hold it. Right? You can analyze it. Observe it. Again, that uh, third-party hands-off kind of posture. Poised, I feel. Because you know, you have a knowingness that it, it, it's, it's real, but it ain't really real. Again, everything we see and be picking up light and energy and information and data. Yeah. The sunlight and the warmth that you feel is already in the past. It's gone. It's not current. The light that we see from the stars is not current. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Right on the nose. Mm -hmm. It's not. So it's about perception. How are you using your conscious space? Are you soberly seeing? What it really is, beloved. It's just a way, different way of thinking about it. Just a different way of thinking about it. Flip it, flip it, flip it, yeah, we flip it. Just a different way of looking at it. Can you do that? Even if it's just for shits and giggles. Flip it. See what your mind say. See how's it resonating in your spirit. I know. Well, why don't you like that word shit? Do you care, really? It's neither here nor there. Is it profane? Do you think it's profane? I don't know. I'm just like, I don't feel any kind of way about it. It's a word. This one. This one. This one. Okay. Earth school. What do we say? We here to do what? Learn. It's a journey. Literally. Survival. Can you do Survivor Bear Gorillas on a cosmic level? <laughs> we Again, everything coming from the inside out. You think that show was built out of nothing? No. What, the indigenous peoples? Huh, Survivor. Yeah. It's really that easy. It really is. Life lessons, soul growth. Study, higher learning, soul growth. That's what it is. Anything else? That's it. I'll show you that. Soul growth. Spirit said that's it. That's it. Your soul wanted to grow. What is you over here picking at? She be over here picking at stuff. It's the cat. And see, she pulling the rug. She picking at my rug. I don't know what she growing through. Maybe she wouldn't discover what that rug going to do if she pick at it. I don't know. It's all school. Higher learning. You know? And if, if that right there, the fear, 
again, fear. I realize that I am testing my resolve to live in the energy of love. Love itself is a whole range of frequency, right? From the destruction and tearing down all the way to the building and the creating and building up of everything. Like the full spectrum. The whole from the beginning to the end. From the end to the beginning. Like all of it. All of creation. That's why we say love isn't a thing you do. You don't love someone. You, you operate in the frequency of love. And whether that's high vibration or low vibration. I mean, whatever the vibration is. I mean, I, I be trying to figure out how to talk about low vibration and high vibration. All this stuff. Because the lower spectrum or different spectrum. Opposite pole of that. Again, okay, there we go. There you go. Opposite poles. Boom. North-south poles. We know that opposite, the polarity, right? And there's a balance to that thing. Boom. Balance. Just like the Libra scales, it's a balance, right? So if you got one end over here and you got a pole down here, you got to balance them two poles and come to center. Polarity to, to figure out which way you're going to polarize. And the, oftentimes it's just to be centered, to come to par with that thing. Understand that, like I say, in nature, we see volcanoes are highly destructive. And I mean, I say, I mean, you talking about, huh, nature's force? Hmm. Well, blow up. I mean, you talking about building up hundreds and hundreds of years worth of pressure? Huh. And then all of that lava burning and inside that fire? Yeah. Melting stuff up, all of that rocking stuff. Uh, material that's down in there in the middle in that gut and then it get fired that fire raves on up and that pressure just, and then it just boom explode and all of this come out and you talking about smoking ash and sulfur and it could suffocate everything that's I mean like you talking about to a uh, force and then what does it do though that volcanic ash and lava hot rock will burn down everything in its path clear it out make way for the new and then when it that new it's the only thing that creates new landmass from my understanding naturally yeah that hot la lava hit that cool ocean them two poles coming together boom what you got whole new land earth regenerated reborn with some nourishment because huh you talking about anything that's grown on volcanic ash soil huh does uh, the most nutrient soil on the planet hmm talk about it father it is the polarity of life everything has a pole everything is duality duality the light in the dark the female in the male the north and the south hot in the cold it's all duality manifest with the unmanifest spirit versus the flesh yes it's polarity i realize that i am testing my resolve to live in the energy of love testing my resolve to live in the energy of love is what's on the fear card duality pole can you come to balance with that thing can you the fact that you are here simply to exist, to experience life, to experience yourself as a piece of creation in every possible way you could ever potentiate, every single way, every way that you could potentially possibly ever potentiate is what we do. Life, creation, uninhibited, unbounded, moving forward with a veracity through space continuum becoming whatever it desires to be in all of creation is existing at the same time everywhere now don't miss it because you're thinking about the past reliving regretting don't miss it because you're in the future, anticipating and worrying. Observe it. 
Come back to the present, beloved. Come back to the present. Come back to your now. Come back to your now. Just something to think about. Poised. Because we never know the moment. Never know the moment. Never. Don't. We can't tell you what to do, source says. But we can only suggest and recommend that you stay tuned in and observe all of your nows, experiencing the wonderment, the certain with the uncertainty of life. And just know that you did, beloved, you did. You chose, you chose to come, you did. And you have the fortitude, the ability to be everything that you signed up to be. But maybe you just need to discover what that is. Because that's the purpose. Study, learn, teach. Grow, change, move creation forward, evolve, and do it now. And until the next time, I love you. I love y'all. I love y'all so much. I love y'all. If you was able to make it through this here session and set for the whole, whole thing, if you was vibing, if you feel this whole vibe, subscribe, beloved, subscribe. And if you think that other people would care about this type of message, share it on now. Share it out with them, even if you don't think that they would care. Share it anyway. They ain't going to do nothing but either say don't send it no more and or something, but just send it out. Hmm. Okay, because it ain't nothing but up for us to just sit around and, and chop it up and think about some stuff and think about it a little bit differently. I mean, what's the harm? You thought about it, either you kicked it to the side, you kicked it out because it don't resonate, it don't matter to you personally, or it made you go, hmm, interesting. Let's ponder on that a little bit further. Pray tell. Either way, I appreciate you. I appreciate you for sharing this space and just engaging and being a part thereof. I do. I love you. I love you. I love you. I appreciate each and every one of you. I love you just like I love me. Edifying on to self, first and foremost, <laughs> self-preservation is the first law of nature. Edifying on to self so that I can edify my source, the Most High God. <laughs> Edifying onto other cells because I see you as a source, beloved. Yes, so that you can edify our source. And when we come together on this thing, boom, oh, we sure enough put together a plate, don't we? Because we were bread. We, 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 we called for good bread. And so when we come together with that edification, we show enough edifying the source. You talking about before and moving this whole creation thing forward? Oh, yeah, that's what we do. Evolutionary, revolutionary. Get it, my week. Let's get it. Yeah, y'all geared up for the week? I hope so. We want 15 here. We're going to go ahead on and call this an ashe. Hey, Father, what say you? Do you say that this is an ashe? Ashe. And peace be on to all of you. Mm-hmm.